Hey guys, welcome to PC Perspective. Today we have a unique video where we don't, re usually when we're recording these types of videos, we don't bring in special guests, but we have one. It's Josh Walbreth, everybody. And I'm really not that special. Well, you're not even really a guest. You're just kind of making an appearance. Um, we're here today to talk about uh, an article that is going up on the site. We're gonna, the article kind of compares PC versus PS4 versus Xbox One. And then the real kind of point of it all is to talk about what system build options we are kind of recommending um, that kind of promote the PC and say, well, here's what you can do for about the same amount of money as these consoles, for a little bit more money than these consoles. But let's quickly um, go over in this article, you mentioned some of the architectural differences between not only the two consoles, but the two consoles and PC of equivalents. What do you think are kind of like the key standouts there? Well, the, the primary standout is that both of these consoles are based on AMD silicon, and they're surprisingly similar. Certainly some of the speeds and feeds are a little different, but uh, essentially they're both based on two quad-core Jaguar-based processors, so there's eight cores in total in each APU. Uh, Sony goes with a higher-end type offering in terms of pure graphics performance in that they integrate 18 CUs of AMD's GCN architecture, so it's something like 1128 stream 52. units. Pardon? 1152 stream units. 1152. Yep. And then... Uh, it has a 256-bit memory bus, but they utilize GDDR5 at 5.5 gigahertz, I believe. So they have approximately 173 gigabytes per second of bandwidth to have for the processor, for the APU. Uh, Microsoft has done things a little bit differently. They still utilize the two quad-core processors. So you have eight cores, eight threads. Uh, but they kind of change things around. They have, I believe, what, 12 CUs? Yep. 768 but stream units. Or 768 stream, stream units. Um, so it's not as powerful. They, only, they have half as many ROPs as well. They've got 16 as compared to Sony's 32. Hmm. They have utilized DDR3 memory with a 256-bit bus. So it's running at 2133 megahertz. And it's giving them approximately 63, 64 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. And to offset that, they integrated 32 megs of eDRAM into the design. And uh, that only, I believe, um, interacts with the, the GPU portion. So unlike what Intel has with their uh, IV, what well, not well. IV, but the Iris Pro yep. or Crystal Graphics or whatever they call it. Yeah. Um, that it does not act as a cache for the CPU huh. as well, just the graphics portion. So they're hoping to offset some of that, some of those bandwidth issues, as compared to the PS4. Um, overall, I think the 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 APU and Microsoft because of uh, all that eDRAM than the PS4. But overall, until we get both consoles into our hands. Uh, you've got the PS4 already. Uh, the Xbox One is not released yet. Uh, we won't see how that really affects the images and performance on the right. screen. E even, uh, when we have, even when we have both consoles, though, it's going to be tough to really give you, like, uh, compute versus compute, right? Because all these games are going to be custom-tuned for these platforms, so, you know, like, they're going to run it. Some of these games are running at different resolutions. Some of the games are running at different visual quality settings. It'll be interesting to see kind of how they balance that performance difference. And I think that, uh, you know, not to, to send too many of our listeners and viewers to the competition, but Anand did a pretty good job with his Xbox One review of doing A-B with the PS4 versus the Xbox One. And in many instances, the PS4 has slightly higher uh, graphic fidelity hmm. uh it, it's a more aggressive anti-aliasing involved and so you can see a difference between the two but yeah it's it's if you go over to a friend's house play one go back to yours play another it's not going to be night and day right it, it's interesting uh you know the the pure compute performance delta between these two systems is pretty dramatic right so you're talking about 1.84 gigaflops of compute performance on the GPU section of the APU for the Sony system versus 1.27 gigaflops 
on the Microsoft system. And that, was, that's, that includes their little 53, or 53 megahertz increase in the clock speed on the GPU portion uh, as well. So that, that's, a, that's a pretty noticeable difference. One thing that, you know, we're a PC-centric site here. We don't make any bones about it, right? Like we, we love PC gaming. But there are these consoles are interesting for a couple different reasons. Uh, I think primarily because of their performance that you get for the dollar right now. And even if we look at performance per watt, it's going to be pretty impressive too. So uh, the Xbox One is $499, but that includes that giant Kinect sensor as well. The PS4 is $399. And in truth, for the amount of compute capability you get, those are actually really, really good prices. Uh, maybe even if you just look at it from a GPU and CPU standpoint, not considering you know the rest of the entire PC. Do you agree? Well, yeah, because they also come with, of course, the 8 gigs of, of RAM mm -hmm. shared between the CPU and GPU. You have a 500 gig hard drive, and while those are you know maybe 50 bucks at most, uh, it's still it's still there and present. And perhaps most interestingly is that both of them have a Blu-ray drive. And that's still a fifty or sixty dollar uh, purchase for just the drive by itself for a yeah. PC. Yeah. So when you start looking at, at price, performance, and features, uh, th these are becoming appliances in ways. But as we'll probably see with the Xbox One, um, it's going to have a lot more flexibility than what we would typically consider yeah. an appliance. But still, I mean, they're they're custom made. They're built to a specification. Uh, every single one of them is identical. So you've got, of course, economies of scale. Right. And uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see, especially on Sony's side, where they start going with their OS, what they're including with you know, kind of the, the traditional dashboard, what kind of applications and, and whatnot we're going to see from them. Uh, since you know, Microsoft has been pretty aggressive with their kind of uh, <laughs> hypervisor and twin virtual machines go on that one that handles a lot of the applications sure. and and streaming the other that does just totally games so let's 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 jump into uh, kind of the meat of the matter here and look at a couple of uh, system builds that you and I kind of discussed back and forth uh, and ultimately decided on a couple of different options, right? So one of the things in the whole PC versus console battle is there's always a battle. That's, I guess, the first thing is that people seem to be very defensive of their own position. People have a lot of money invested or time invested in one or the other. And, and so there's a lot of trolling and all this other stuff that happens on the internet, but let's take a look at it kind of more objectively. And what we did in the first option was look at uh, a gaming system. What can you build as a new computer for the $500 range? So let's get you, it's, it's very difficult to get in the $400 range with the PS4, but more realistically, what can we do in the $500 range with the Xbox One? And we came up with a list of parts that I think is... Uh, pretty competitive, offers a lot of flexibility, um, and some of those you can see here uh, sitting out next to me. So the the processor that you chose is the AMD A10 6800K. It's a $129 CPU. This is the highest end Richland part available right now. That is correct. It's got the, it's the two module four core. Uh, it's got the VLIW4 architecture. Uh, it's the fastest. GPU currently in AMD's line for the integrated graphics, and it's got the most stream units. I believe it's got something like 384. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, and then we went with a fairly standard MSI FM2 motherboard. It's $59. It's a micro ATX solution. 8 gigs of DDR3 memory running at 1866. And it is, we did go with a higher frequency because the clock speed of your memory on an APU system where the APU is your primary graphic solution can actually make a difference in performance. We've seen that as you go from 1333 to uh, 1666 to 1866. You'll see noticeable you know, frame rate and performance improvements uh, through, uh, through those frequency increases. No discrete graphics card, a one terabyte 
7200 RPM hard drive, a Corsair 200R case, which is obviously much bigger than an Xbox One, but gives you a lot more flexibility in the long run too, a 500 watt Corsair power supply, uh, no optical drive in this build, uh, and then Windows 8.1. It's always testy when you have to get that operating system involved. The total as of this recording is about $549 on Amazon. So in terms of compute power, we're looking at the, the compute power of this APU is about 765 gigaflops, which is quite it's a about bit under. about two-thirds yeah. that of the, uh, the Microsoft product. So uh, where do you think this PC stands in terms of gaming potential compared to the consoles? Uh, gaming potential is, is going to be much lower. It doesn't have the eDRAM. Uh, it doesn't have a 256-bit memory bus. It's, it's got the dual-channel 128-bit that gives it at max... Uh, well, theoretical is, is, I think, around 32 gigs per second. But you're not going to reach that with uh, this particular product. I think uh, Kaveri is going to have a much improved memory controller that will better utilize that bandwidth. But Richland right now, not as much. So, yeah, you can do 1080p gaming on it. But you're going to have to turn the quality settings down quite a bit because I think it's only got uh, something like four ROPs versus 16 in the uh, in the Xbox One, hmm. and compared to 32 ROPs in the Sony PS4. And so, just painting the pixel pixels is going to be a slower endeavor with this, hmm. as well as it's using last generation VLIW4 uh, stream units which are not as efficient as what we're seeing with GCN. And right. so you're also kind of sitting with something that we didn't discuss is when Sony and Microsoft looked at the trade-offs and they thought, well, you know, we could, we could put more power and more TDP to the graphics and have probably a better experience, but we still need a certain amount of processing power. And so that's why they chose the, the two quad-core Jaguar CPUs. They're very low power. They have decent performance, but they're not going to give you kind of the, the throughput and the output that the dual module, mm -hmm. um, what pile driver based, yep. not, yeah, pile driver based uh, CPU is on the APU, the 6800K. Right. And the Jaguar cores on the, on the consoles are running at lower frequencies, I think 1.6 or 1.7. 1 1.6 and 1.7. Oh, yeah. Sony came out and said, hey, we can go up to 2.75, but yeah. everything else needs to be kind of turned off on the chip for it to be able to do that. So, so yeah. I was just going to say that this is, this is one of the reasons why, even, even though I, I totally believe that PC gaming is a superior experience, it really it takes more money at this point in time, especially as a, as a new console is released, right? So if you take our, our APU build, the $500-ish PC that we spec'd out here, and compare it to the 360 and the PS3, which just a couple years ago were still in the $300 to $400 range, $300 range, I guess, the PC looks much, much better. But as the beginning of a, of a, of a console cycle begins, because they're planning on 7 to 10 year life cycles, they overbuild early, right? And either lose money or very come close to losing money in the hardware because they know that this needs to last for a very long time. So it makes sense to me that our APU build at $500, probably for the next couple of years, I would say two years from now, if you spend $500 on a gaming PC, you're going to outstrip the performance of a PlayStation 4 and an Xbox One, right? Obviously, we'll have to see, but that would be my, that would be my claim. But still, for $500, you can build a very good system that not only games, but as Josh Minson mentions in the article, does quite a bit more in terms of browsing the Internet and productivity and multimedia. Uh, and you can hook it up to a TV if you really want to. Uh, the second system, option two that we looked at, which is a little bit more money, uh, but also actually provides you more power in terms of gaming in addition to all the benefits you get with uh, productivity and uh, other apps that you can, programs and stuff that you can actually do on a PC. So this system is built around uh, a six-core processor. This is the AMD FX6300, which is a six-core part that's like $109, I think, today. Uh, an MSI 970A motherboard, which is AM3 Plus motherboard. Those are like $59, $65, depending on where you look. The same Corsair, 8 gigs of memory at 1866, a Radeon R9 270X, 
which is $199. And then you got the Seagate Barracuda one terabyte hard drive again, the same Corsair 200R case, a slightly larger uh, 600 watt Corsair power supply, a Pioneer Blu-ray reader included in this case, with also does DVD burning, Windows 8.1, OEM all comes to a kind of grand total of about $780 before any rebates again on Amazon. Now what's different here is because we've increased the GPU up to the 270X, it has 1,280 stream units, but these are better stream units. No, these are the same GCN based architecture, but there are 1,280 of them running at a much higher clock speed. So now we're talking about basically 2.7 gigaflops of GPU compute performance. Teraflops. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. 2.7 teraflops uh, of compute performance compared to 1.84 on the PS4 and 1.27 on uh, the Xbox One. So now you're getting significantly better graphics performance, better CPU performance, plus you can actually take advantage of programs and functions that actually will utilize the CPU performance. Uh, you know, in, in, a, in a PC for... $250, $300 more expensive than you get with the Xbox One. Yeah, not only that, I mean, it's going to have better 1080p performance uh, for that price. It's, you know, kind of comparable, um, I guess, in, in many ways to the, the Sony PS4. But again, you've got 300 more megahertz of clock speed because I believe this runs at 1.1 gigahertz uh, for the graphics card. Yep. And again, you have the more stream units, the more active CUs. So you're going to get a lot more performance out of it, and uh, you're going to have higher visual quality pretty much across the board. I can't really think of a time when you wouldn't, and not only that, but it can it can push 1600p displays. So what, 2560 by 1600? Yep. That's not much of a problem for it. I mean, it's not going to be fantastic right. as compared to some of the higher end you know, video cards that are $500, $600, $700 in, in price, but it can push it. It can... It can do it, and you've got multi monitors that then you're you're talking about as well. Get a couple of uh, 1080p or some of the 1050 uh, older yeah. monitors, yeah. and it can do surround without you know too much trouble. And a lot of older games and things that are a little bit more hardcore, you can just squeeze down into one monitor on your own. So these are things, and and the flexibility that you have with the PC is of course much greater. Again, transcoding uh, video, all kinds of apps that you can just download either for free for buy. Um, you yeah. have an amazing amount of games out there, which the PS4 and Xbox One do not yet have. Not yet. So you, you yeah. load up Steam and you've got, I don't know how many thousands of games. <laughs> I don't know how, that they have yeah. in their repertoire. I don't know how many you know, free games are out there. Uh, it's just kind of insane. So that extra 250 bucks over the Xbox One, it's a big chunk of change for most of us yep. right off the bat. It is. But at the same time, you're going to have a lot more longevity, potentially. Uh, you have a massive back catalog of games that these new consoles do not have. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's it's still kind of a win for the PC. I agree. But it's, I, I, I think... I think, again, it comes down to <clears throat> PCs can be so much better than what you get on consoles if you're willing to invest. Is there a larger investment up front, especially, you know, right as these two consoles release? Yes. Um, you know, for $500, uh, Call of Duty Ghosts and Battlefield 4 are probably going to look better. They will look better on the PS4 and the Xbox One than they do on the $500 gaming PC. But for $780, $800, now you're talking about the PC looking better. Now, I do say we haven't included the price of a monitor or keyboard or mouse, just kind of assuming that this is something that most people would already have. If not, that is something you have to add on to. But with a console, you have to have a TV. And we assume most people have a TV uh, to hook it up to as well. Um, so what we plan on doing with this, so this is kind of like this, this $780 build uh, is going to be kind of our flagship demo purposes for the next week or so. We're going to actually take these components, which we don't have exact duplicates of in something like uh, the motherboard or the power supply, uh, but we've got the case, the processor, the graphics cards, the really important parts for gaming performance. We're going to put it together, we're going to build it in the system, we're going to show people how easy it is to build a computer, how easy it is to install Windows, install Steam, get a great experience running that way. You can hook it up to your TV, you can use Steam Big Picture mode, 
uh, and really get a PC gaming experience that you cannot get on a console. There are things the Xbox One is going to do with its Kinect that you cannot get on a PC today as well. There are trade-offs for sure. So, you know, you'll see a lot of PC websites, a lot of PC uh, hardware sites talk about just totally dismissing the consoles. Um, and, and I don't think that's something that we should do because I think Josh and I both agree that in terms of like the cool hardware that they offer, that it's, it's, it's really neat stuff at a really compelling price. And one of the discussions we've been having is if this APU only uses 150 to 170 watts, uh, let's say it's 150 watts, could, they po could AMD possibly bring an almost exactly the same design, probably the Xbox one because of its use of DDR3, to a retail you know, DIY type market, right? So could you get eight Jaguar cores and uh, 1,270 gigaflops of compute performance uh, on an APU and ship it out that way at a higher TDP? Because I think the, uh, uh, the APU that we used in our first build was like 100 watt part, right? So we're not Correct. that far from it. We're, you know, maybe 30, 40 watts away. It would require infrastructure changes. It would require, you know, new motherboards and, and that type of thing if they decided to go that route. But I'd be curious to see, you know, if that's something they would be able to produce at a reasonable price, you know, in the future to offer up this Steambox style custom design uh, console. Yeah, it's going to take a couple of dollars because it's still a 350 millimeter square product mm -hmm. which is about the same size as your $299 R9 280X yeah. otherwise known as the HD 7970 uh, Tahiti it's the same size as almost so you've got to take into consideration that you know it's a pretty good chunk of silicon and uh, I guess uh, what the, the AMD, what uh, A10, 6800, mm -hmm. the Richland, those are in the 240 millimeter square range. Okay, I can't I can't remember exactly offhand. I should have looked it up before this, but um, it's still significantly less than 350 millimeter square yep. for AMD. It, so, it, it'll be interesting to see. So, like the the APU on the 6800K is like 40 something percent of the die's GPU. No, it's like 51. Okay, all right. Um, some, it's, it's high, right? I think maybe yeah. Kaveri is 51. I think maybe this one is a little bit lower. But I, either way, I'd like to see where that ratio is on, uh, say, the PS4's APU or the Xbox One's APU. Uh, because those Jaguar cores are smaller, but there's twice as many of them and how that affects TDP and stuff. So interesting discussions that we'll probably have uh, like later on our PC Perspective podcast or in another story coming up. Uh, for now, though, I encourage everybody to go read this article that Josh published uh, that compares these consoles, compares the specs, and then we look at what can you build for $500 versus $750 to $800 uh, to compete against these and to create really compelling options. I encourage you guys to go check that out. And keep checking back here uh, on the YouTube channel or on PCPro.com as we kind of go through the generic basics of let's build a PC, let's show you that we can install an OS on it fairly easily, get Steam on there, download games. You can create kind of an environment that is as console-like as you can get uh, in today's market, and uh, we'll, we'll be demonstrating that for you guys very soon. Josh, thanks for joining us or joining me, I guess, on this video here. and explaining Thanks for your... having me and, and my exceptionally... Messy office. Well, mine's really messy too, but luckily my camera points the other way. Uh, we'll nice. see you guys next time. Thanks for checking in.